So we're back here at the sawmill talking about hand filing. Uh, I believe this is a 54 inch saw plate, so that means this thing's got like 52 teeth or saw bits. It's a lot of hand sharpening. So if you're using one of these to sharpen your teeth, go ahead and grab a phone and you better put on some music. And if you have some iced tea, you better pour your glass because it takes a while. Seriously, you gotta wake up before dawn if you're gonna do this before you run the sawmill. So this is what I used to do before I got a hand follower, which we'll talk about in another video. <laughs> if you want to do something with nothing, get you an old uh, Nicholson bastard file, I think is what they're called. I don't know, somewhere in the medium coarse level. I don't know the scale there. But anyhow, it's best if you use a new tooth. Um, if you're trying to get some more out of these teeth, always compare the, the teeth that you're going to work on to a brand new tooth so that you can get that angle right because that's the most important thing if your saw is not running right and it has some difficulty getting through the cut it's binding starts to get hot starts to wobble uh, not cutting a straight line make sure your teeth are sharp um, and the main thing to do there it may feel sharp they're going to feel sharp right on to you wear them down to nubs so that's not a good way the best way is to get a new tooth put beside it and look at that angle. I mean, you can see like this brand new one's a little longer because I've only taken like a filing or two off of this. So length by length, you can tell this is brand new tooth because it has a little extra length on it. And you can see this one here has been filed back once or twice because I've had to uh, file them back down. And I haven't ran it much. But if you look down the angle of the tooth there, the cutting angle, make sure they're the same. So you want to kind of keep this as a gauge as you're working and then you can put your hand file against there at the angle you want and just keep moving it horizontally which would be perpendicular to the tooth and you can file it on down if you're um, you know the edge there is broken off or the corners there or the tooth are broken off if they're not nice and square like this uh, you're gonna have to file it so it does get nice and square and then you can measure the width of that tooth and if it isn't very close to this you got to be careful because that curve or the much the amount that it cuts away is going to be too thin and that's going to cause it not to remove enough wood so that your blade can't get through the log without heating up so you're going to have to make some width on that the old folks swear by using what they call a some people say swage swedge and this has like a concave and convex curvature on it. You can put that on the tooth to kind of flare it out or flare it in. Never had any luck with this. I haven't really studied it. If it gets down to that point, I just replaced the tooth. Um, but just wanted to show you that if you wanted to see what it looked like. Because you'll read about it on the forums. It's a very good paperweight. Anyhow, back to that perpendicular motion. Always have a new tooth to gauge by. And... Uh, have that music playlist you're going to need about an hour's worth of music because it takes a while to go through 50 or more teeth but good luck